All right, well, it was bound to happen. You stir things up in the Twitterverse long enough. Eventually, you have to settle these things face-to-face, or in this case, as close as we can get to that. And so for all of you watching right now, welcome to the first ever Reds Cooking Challenge. From Reds Live on Fox Sports Ohio, I'm Brian Giesenslaw. Our contestants today, you know them well, Reds catcher Tucker Barnhart and the voice of the Reds on radio, Tommy Thrall. Gentlemen, it's not Great American Ballpark, but man, it's good to see you. How you doing? We're all, I'm good over here. I, uh, I would assume Tommy's the same, but um, I'm excited for this. I just got really nervous when you said it would be coming. <laughs> I don't know yeah, about I was, Tommy, uh, but I'm, I'm nervous. I, I, I was nervous. I think I was maybe a little bit more nervous last night for this than I would be to go call a game. But there's two places I'm fairly comfortable. That's a kitchen and the broadcast booth. So hopefully I don't screw up here on, on television in front of all of Red's country because that would be really yeah. embarrassing. And I know Tucker would never let me live it down. Tucker would never let you forget it. But that's the root of this whole conversation and the root of this whole show. So we're here to cook. We're here to settle this Twitter taunting from the kitchen that's been going on between you guys for the past couple of weeks. So before we get into specifics, and may I remind you to everyone watching right now, you will be the judge when Tucker and Tommy are done. I'll give you the criteria in just a bit, but you'll vote on Red's Twitter. Guys, there really are very few rules here. Uh, the main rule is that you have to be able to continue engaging in the conversation as you cook. <laughs> so hopefully that's not a problem for anyone. But seeing as how you are locked and loaded in the kitchen, ready to go, gentlemen, let's begin. As you guys get started, hang on, Tommy, let me give the, the criteria for judging, because we have to get to this part to the people actually watching this process, knowing that in the end, they can't exactly taste what's being done in the kitchen. But here's what we've been given in terms of how you should vote on Twitter. As you watch these guys cook, and certainly when the finished product is plated at the end of this presentation, you're judging Tommy and Tucker on creativity, which uh, I think both get high marks already for that. Kitchen skills and techniques. Uh, that's uh, a little bit objective, subjective, so we'll find out about that. And then final presentation and plating, along with which dish you would prefer to eat, obviously. Uh, so it's gonna be fun. What I'm doing with the tenderloin, I'm just using a blend of Italian spices, uh, some rosemary, some parsley, um, and, and some thyme, a little salt, a little pepper. I'm gonna kind of generously put that on the uh, on the tenderloin itself, and then we're gonna go, we're gonna head out to the grill in a minute or so, and we're gonna toss that on and get a really hard, really hard sear on the outside, get some good grill marks, um, and then it's gonna go in the oven. We're gonna bake it to. Uh, we're gonna bake it to about 145 degrees, 150 degrees at the, uh, at the thickest point of the loin. Um, and then we're gonna, when that's all finished up, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna slice that pretty thin uh, and we're gonna put that on the bread. And, uh, and like I said earlier, it's gonna go in the oven uh, and we're gonna throw it all together. And uh, I think it's gonna turn out pretty good. While that, while the, while the oven heats up, I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, Brene sauce started. It's a, if you're at all familiar with Eggs Benedict, which is one of my favorite brunch items and another thing that I like to make, and I actually kind of considered making it today. But Bernays sauce is very similar to Hollandaise sauce, which you get on Eggs Benedict. Uh, it's a little different in that it's got tarragon in it and it's um, also got shallots. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna get this ready to go, uh, open up. It, it, you make it with uh, a wine, and then uh, you can use champagne or white wine vinegar. The white wine vinegar with this uh, Woodbridge Chardonnay, that's gonna make for a great base. And then it's egg yolks and butter after that. So it's really not that hard. And it's an incredible topper, especially if you're gonna use some crab meat on your steak. Tommy, I just wanna make sure that I, that I do reiterate is that Tommy's using a lot of big words and a lot of fancy things that he wants you to think that it's a lot of work, a lot of hard time and effort. Don't let that cloud your judgment as far as what dishes you think you like the most. Just keep that in mind. <laughs> so Tommy, question here. Any formal training in your background? Do you still measure ingredients? Or are you a guy that's a pinch of this and toss in some of that? Uh, you know, it, it depends if, it, it, first of all, no formal training at all whatsoever, <laughs> no, none. I, uh, if, if cooking, if taking a recreational cooking class counts as formal training, then yes, I've got one. 
Uh, but no, no formal training. Just uh, like to pick the brains of people who know what they're doing. Um, so that's why I haven't asked Tucker a lot of questions. But uh, no, I uh, <laughs> no no formal training. Just um, and I do I do measure stuff now. Tucker and I are a lot alike in this regard. In that you know the first time I make something, I usually measure out the ingredients, um, and I'll pre well follow a recipe the first time around. But after I've done that and I get comfortable with it. Then I have an idea of how I want to make it, how I want it to taste, and I just throw things in. Uh, like, for instance, the shallots here. We're going to want about two tablespoons of diced shallots for the base of this Bernays sauce. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that up. Let's watch, watch the knife skills. As Tommy's talking, I ran, ran out and grabbed the tenderloins. They look mighty good. See how they have a really good hard sear on the outside. Now, they're nowhere near finished cooking, so we're going to have to pop those in the oven here in a minute. But we want to let the temperature kind of come down a little bit, a little bit as close to kind of room temperature as possible. Um, that way, like I said, to slow the cooking process and we don't cook it too hot, uh, too fast. Uh, just sliced up the um, the Italian, the Italian sub bread, the Italian loaf. And I've let that sit out all night uh, to kind of get a little crispy. That way, when I toss the truffle aioli and the cheese and everything on there, once it melts down, uh, the cheese that is, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't make the bread soggy. So that's a little a little tip. If you want to make stuffing, you want to make your own croutons, anything like that. It's really easy. Just set the just set the uh, bread out overnight, or you can even pop it in the oven. Say about 350. Bake it for a couple minutes, five ten minutes. Um, it'll crisp up the bread, uh, and you can use it in your own salad. Or like I said, you can make a stuffing uh, or make a sub that has a, a sauce on it, and then make sure that you keep everything. Uh, nice and uh, crispy or crunchy when you and you have a good crunch of the sandwich to that. What we're doing right now, I just want to kind of update on the Bernays sauce. I've put the uh, Chardonnay, the white wine vinegar together with the minced up shallots. I threw in the tarragon, about a tablespoon of tarragon. You want about two tablespoons of shallots, uh, about a tablespoon of tarragon for now. We'll add more in later. You're going to cook this almost all the way down and most of the liquid's gonna be out of this. So this is gonna cook for a while and boil for a while. And that's gonna, <clears throat> excuse me, that's gonna reduce down for a little bit. Another update on the tenderloins. I'm a big proponent, <laughs> especially I'm not, a, I'm not a, a, a pro cook by any means. And just because you use a thermometer when you put stuff in the oven, I, do, I don't do it with steak because I've cooked steak enough to really get a feel for what I'm doing as far as the times and things like that but when you're unfamiliar with something like I'm unfamiliar with pork and so I use a thermometer because you don't like I said you don't want to overcook it you don't want to undercook it and and have to toss it back in the oven or back on the grill and so I use a thermometer I use a digital thermometer it keeps me updated as far as the temperature is concerned and lets me know as far as the time frame uh, where I'm at uh, with my meat so the tossing the probe in the uh, in the pork right now it's going to go in a 450 degree or 425 degree oven excuse me uh, not too, not too hot, but it, it, enough to get it done in a uh, in a timely manner. So we're gonna toss that in, we'll let that bake off, and again, <coughs> we're gonna let it cook until it alerts me that it's 150 degrees. We're getting pretty close here on uh, this Bernays sauce. So once this cooks down, you actually let it cool a little bit. I am gonna put it into a food processor. You can use a blender if you want, uh, <laughs> and then you're gonna. You're using that thing. <laughs> you're, the food Lied processor. I, 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 I didn't use, I'm not using the blender. This is the food processor. Very oh, different, my, very, my very bad. different kitchen my, utensil. My yeah. Do you really know the difference between a food processor and a blender? <laughs> What's happening, man? <laughs> What's going on? Nothing, Tommy, I can't see your video. Are you, you got one? I, I do. <laughs> it's not there. You're not getting it? <laughs> no. All right. So oh, there everyone there watching at home, uh, Tucker Barnhart is a veteran of many Reds Fest cook-offs, and at winner, every Reds you. Fest, yeah. and, and a winner, but at every Reds Fest cook-off, I think in the history of Reds Fest, in some form or fashion, former Reds catcher Corky Miller has made an appearance. So it's only fitting, Corky. First off, thanks for the time, but you smell food, you see recipes, you're in, right? Well, yeah, I was, uh, I was at the shop, I was kind of making a... Uh a trophy for next year. I don't know if you guys can see that. Hey, yeah, that's, what I'm about. <laughs> that's outstanding. That's, that's uh, the gold glove that that Tucker really wants to win, uh, and and he's he's got to win ten cookoffs, and I think this one uh, it will be number ten. He might get the the gold the gold glove uh, for cooking. This no, one right now. Can we call? 
Go ahead. Oh, boy. That's, that's the, you're talking about this one right now, Kirby. I'm talking about this one, Tommy. And Notice, that Tommy, hurts. he didn't make a golden microphone. Thank you very no, much. No, he did not. He did not. <laughs> no. No, I did notice that. Yeah. So what we're doing now, we've got a little uh, cream fresh. We're going to do equal parts uh, cream fresh and equal parts mayonnaise. That's going to go in a uh, in a truffle aioli. Um, we're going to put a, we're going to put a little garlic in there. We're going to put a little uh, rosemary and uh, finish it off with some white truffle oil, um, and it should be pretty tasty. I mean, look at that. Look, come on, cork. Hey, that that does look good. That's a big piece of meat. Big old right. hunk of meat. So we're gonna let that just sit there. We're pretty close. So now that that's done, <clears throat> I'm gonna heat up the skillet real quick. You want your steak to rest a little bit anyways. So we're gonna let that rest. While that rests, heat up the skillet, get the scallops in, cook those up, and then we're done. So then it's just a matter of plating. All right, Tucker, you about, close? Yeah, I got about, let's see, I'd say I got about 10 minutes left. All right. <clears throat> All right, so while Tucker and Tommy continue to work their way towards the end of this thing, Corky, a couple of things for you before we let you go and get back to the shop. How would you handicap this matchup based on the scouting report, what you've gained over the years about Tommy Thrall and Tucker Barnhart and what they're capable of in the kitchen? Well, you know, I, I can see Tommy took the, the smart road, the, the easy road with the surf and turf. <laughs> And, and that, like like Tucker said, that might help them push them over the edge. Um, but it is kind of early, so some people might not want a whole meal with the with the surf and turf. So if we're going to take votes, uh, you know, someone might just want a, a small sandwich like uh, Tucker's meat. It's going to be a small it's, sandwich. It's, it's, not, it's probably not a small sandwich. It's not a Tucker's. small sandwich. <laughs> yeah, he was but, saying it would feed his whole family for a week. No, not weeks. Just today. Just today. Well, you know, that's what. So it, it just kind of depends. I mean, it, we're, we got to go on. We got to go on presentation. Um, I think Tommy's got the easier, uh, the easier way of, of doing a presentation. Tucker is going to have a sandwich. Hopefully, he can dress that up a little bit. Um, I'm sure the the cut down the middle of the sandwich is going to be a big deal for Tucker mm. when that happens. And, and the cheese and, and the sauce coming out. Um, and hopefully Tommy's sauce is thick enough where it's just not running over the table, you know? That that's is a, a key a with a good sauce. You want it to be just thick enough to coat the back of a metal spoon. Oh, oh look at that. that. That's chef talk. Or, or, or what about a wood spoon? A wood hey. spoon? It's a little harder to stick to a metal spoon, though, so. Yeah, okay. By the way, you hear that sizzle? Nice. Music I, I can't right wait. There. I can't wait to see the GoPro version of this. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Ooh. How you doing? Hey, do you got bread big enough for that thing, son? <laughs> I'm, I'm cutting it up. I'm cutting it up. <laughs> how you doing? How you doing? That's a really nice piece of meat there. Oh, what? you got to taste it. <laughs> Mark, what do you got on the... Uh, crust here oh man that's really nice oh all the way around too that's really nice tommy uh you know i, I uh i'm looking forward to seeing every uh the finished product and you know you got to remember one thing you got to finish strong and don't panic at the end again no glove uh plaque will go to the winner so let me know and by the way we are right at a perfect Medium rare. Oh my god. Wow. As it comes down the pike, Tommy's talking about how good his steak is. This pork tenderloin is pretty darn good too. So we're I know I'm over here, but I'm back. We're plating the sandwich. I've got a massive mess. That's why I've got to kind of go outside of the camera angle. And I don't want to mess up my rig that I got going. So I'm over here back and forth grinding to get this sandwich plated. But I think you're gonna like the finished product. So here, I don't know if you can see this. We've got the sandwich made. You gotta lay it on there. The tenderloin's ready. Man. It's ready to head into the uh, head into the oven. Melt the cheese down. Like I said, we're about eight eight ish minutes away. Perfect. Thrall, teeth thrall, ETA. Um, I am putting the crab meat on as we speak. 
and then Tommy's going to be done before me. I'm, I'm almost done. Yeah, I, uh, I'm putting the crab meat on. Now the crab meat, I didn't cook it. It was already, it, I, I, I got it um, out of a can and I, it was, I got this the same place I got the scallops down at Finley Market. Uh, and I was curious about how good it would be out of the can. So I um, sampled it last night. It is outstanding. So you just heat it up in the skillet. And uh, so I've done that, I've warmed it up. Now we're gonna put that over the steak. And then we'll spoon some of the Bernays over. And then we're gonna be done here. I mean, my food might be gone and eaten by the time Tucker finishes. <laughs> <laughs> Very good possibility. It looks hot. <laughs> I'm just gonna house this mozzarella cheese while while I wait. Just go ahead. I'm gonna just spoon this Bernays right over the crab meat here. I'm not gonna lie, I have no idea what my sandwich is gonna look like when I pull it out of the oven. I hope it looks good. There we go. So the sandwich just came out, I'm getting ready to play. So I don't know if you can see that there. Provolone <laughs> melted down nicely. Got the pork tenderloin. I'm gonna that cut thing it is massive. Golly. Yeah, it's a big sandwich. So now that we're there, and I assume we're both ready, uh, we'll let what I assume would be considered the challenger, Tommy Thrall, present his final plate. T. Thrall, take it away. Yeah. Uh, so put on a little last dab of the Bernays here, and here we go. You see a. Um, Tilt the camera down a little bit. The steak, pretty much a perfect medium rare. We've got that lump crab meat on top, smothered in some Bernays, which will also pair well with both the scallops and the bacon wrapped asparagus. I mean, that's that's heaven on a plate right there. Eat your heart out. <laughs> if, if I've got a last it. meal, this might be it. So here we go. Finished product. Oh. Hard we got we got the uh, very generous amount of sub. Um, what what you have here is you have a, uh, a grilled and baked pork tenderloin sandwich uh, with some melted uh, provolone cheese, some melted mozzarella cheese, as well as some uh, sautéed rapini um, with some garlic and some red pepper flake. You have some uh, boiled red potatoes um, finished with garlic salt, a little salt, a little regular salt and pepper uh, and butter, as well as some garlic. And you also have your, um, on, the, on the side there, to dip not only the potatoes, but the sandwich as well, you have the truffle aioli. Sorry for the crying kid in the background. Um, the truffle aioli <laughs> is equal parts creme fraiche and mayonnaise with some rosemary and some parsley and some truffle oil. Cheers. Wow. Guys, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Any final words for each other before I put this to a vote on Twitter? Tommy? Uh, I just wish we could eat each other's dishes. Because I'm with you, man. Right it looks there, so good. <laughs> that looks incredible. And I, awesome. I am a big fan of an aioli. So any sauce, I'm good with. That that sounds outstanding. Same here, Tommy. All I'm, right. a, I'm so, a big surf and turf guy. I'm a big scallop guy uh, as well. So those paired together sounds awesome, man. Like I said, I wish we could be in the same kitchen doing this uh, and eat each other's food. Well, maybe that's Maybe that's on the horizon. Hopefully for all of us. Baseball is on the horizon, and being in the same kitchen might be on the horizon. But for now, the final reminder, uh, you guys have presented an outstanding work for both, but it goes to a vote, and so it goes to Red's Twitter. Go to Red's Twitter, and there you're judging these two based on the creativity of the dish they prepared, their kitchen skills and techniques, final presentation and plating, and which dish you would prefer to eat. We will tally those votes and declare a winner on the Reds Twitter account very, very shortly. We'll leave it with this. Bon appetit. And thanks for checking out the first Reds cooking competition, guys. Take care.